What fact about the opposite sex did you learn embarrassingly late in life? I had always thought a woman had her period once a month so I had it in my head that it was like a cell phone bill where it was every month on a specific date like the 15th. I was friends with some girls who were sisters in school and they couldn't understand 4 weeks instead of 1 month so they would freak out if they had 2 periods this month, at the beginning and end of a 31 day month, and talk about how they must be sick or something. It was infuriating. It's closer to lunar month, but still not exact. For a while I realized my wife was getting hers right around the start of the full moon so I was using that to track it. Imagine her surprise when I made a move and she goes, I just started my period, and my response was what? It's not the full moon yet. I had to explain everything to her, and she about died laughing. I didn't know that men ejaculated. I don't know why. I was in for a big surprise the first time I had sex. I was 19 years old. I dated my now husband in high school, and had an embarrassing attempt at a first blow job. I didn't really watch porn, so I literally just started kissing it, no tongue, and then asked if it felt good. Um, not really. He still married me. A friend in high school never paid any attention in sex ed. He was 18 years old when his girlfriend told him her period was late. He thought it was weird. A few days later she told him it's okay. I got my period he said you and went on his merry way. Told a couple of chick friends how his girlfriend was acting strange. We had to explain the entire process of conception to him. He was absolutely fascinated so we went all out with vagina diagrams, pregnancy, birth, periods. He would ask questions about it all day for months. Good on you guys for educating without ridiculing him until he was too embarrassed to ask questions anymore. A long time ago in my late teens. A girl asked me really uncomfortable questions and she admitted she was an open book. I asked if she masturbates. She said number girls don't masturbate. I believed her for the longest time until I met my ex. Which then revealed she did. It was a combination of embarrassment and anger on being trolled. If it helps. I was never given any kind of sex talk as a child and had no access to anything pornographic. So as a teen, I used to think I was one of the only girls who masturbated and that I was a weird freak for feeling like I wanted sex. I always remember the day my mom gave my younger brother a lock for his bedroom door when he hit puberty. As a teenage girl my need for bedroom privacy was never on anybody's radar. Except my own, obviously. It stuns me that my boyfriend, 22 years old, is allowed to close and lock his door when I'm over at his house but when I'm at my house I have to keep my door open completely, and I'm also 22 dart. The fact that his parents don't constantly open his door without knocking also stunned me. My parents always open my door without even knocking at all. Actually, a variety of things he does with great freedom absolutely baffles me, because I could never. It's a strange world out there for girls, edit, and boys with similarly weird overbearing moms. Lol my mom just turned the lock around so she could lock me in. Also the knocking while opening the door. Ooh -hoo. If I ever locked my door I'd be in such huge trouble. What are you hiding? Etc. So annoying I'm not hiding anything I just want to relax without any one O-P-E-N-I-N-G-M-Y-D-O-O-R. I'm so sorry you know the experience. Less of a strange world for girls and more that your parents are obviously mega scared of you doing anything that resembles normal adult behavior. I will add that this isn't an overall criticism of your parents as people. Just that they don't appear to have wanted to handle this issue with maturity and perspective. Guy here, 
My parents knocked before entering. By that I mean knock then immediately open the door. That shit still pisses me off and I don't lie there. I knew what masturbating was but I didn't know girls could do it and didn't make the connection when I started doing it when I was like 11. I realized when I was like 14 that what I was doing was considered jerking off. I also thought I was one of the only ones. I fucking freaked when all my white blood cells simultaneously came out of my penis. It was a short panic attack. I couldn't figure out why it's so common for men to pee on the seat and the floor around the seat. Is it that hard to aim? Like, how the fuck is this such a thing? Then I had a son and potty trained him. I remember the moment it clicked. He pointed it one way and the pee went a totally different direction. It defied logic. Split streams are the bane of any man's lavatory experience. That's a sentence I didn't think I'd be writing today. One time I aimed at the middle and it split into two streams. One stream missed the toilet to the left, and the other missed to the right. I totally get why it can be common for a guy to hit the seat or floor unintentionally I am a guy and done it plenty of times. What I don't get is why so many guys can't wipe it up after. I once had my stream not only split, but continuously rotate for a few seconds as if I had become some sort of human sprinkler. It defied even my own understanding of my genitalia. Not about opposite sex but still kind of fits the criteria. I have a friend who has one testicle. When he was born, he had one removed due to birth complications. Urethra wrapped around it, I think. His parents never mentioned it to him so as he grew, he believed having one testicle was normal. As he got into middle school, other kids kept making jokes about balls. He thought they were funny because of how people referred to multiple testicles and just played it off as part of the joke. In 7th grade, he discovered porn and realized the men in the videos all have two testicles. He confronted his parents in a really awkward conversation afterwards. For those who are curious, the one testicle grew larger to carry the weight of missing the other one. It's roughly in the shape of a gently flattened ball of Play-Doh. A guy I was on a team with had one huge ball and one regular sized ball. We kept telling him to get it checked out because the thing was enormous. After we got off tour he went to the doctor and was like yeah apparently I had a pretty severe kidney infection in one kidney so the other kidney grew and worked harder to compensate. So the corresponding ball grew. It's better now. Blew my fucking mind. My wife thought men pull their pants all the way down at urinals and asked if it wasn't weird to see all those butts in a time I had to take a leak. So we were having dinner a few weeks ago, and my wife, 28, and my mother-in-law, 54, said something to me about how I shouldn't take our daughter into a men's restroom now that we're potty training her. I said that they aren't dirtier than women restrooms and every time I am a janitor, AMA comes up one reddit, that they always claim that women restrooms are far worse than men's. They said it wasn't because of cleanliness, they just didn't want our daughter to see a bunch of old men's dicks at urinals. I think there's a still a dent in the floor from where my jaw hit it. I argued with them for at least 5 minutes that it's nothing like whatever they've concocted in their head. I then informed them that the only time in my life I have ever seen another man's dick in a public bathroom was at a baseball game in the 90s back when they had the old aluminum trough style urinals where everyone would crowd around. Anyway. When I explained that there are dividers and men stand so close to them that you can't see them unless you're taller than the divider and standing at a urinal looking down at their junk, they were shocked. They thought everyone just saw each other dicks in the bathroom. Like we just run around flapping in the wind or something. My mother-in-law then said that they did the same thing for my wife when she was little girl. They would never take her into a men's restroom. 
I asked my father-in-law why he never said anything and he just shrugged. I want to try and get a photo of a bunch of guys peeing in urinals to prove my point. But there's that whole issue of the fact that I would have to take a picture of a bunch of guys peeing in urinals in order to prove me point. I've never wanted to see a men's restroom more in my life. My preconceived image has all been a lie. My wife's manager, single male, 56 plus, made a comment 3 years ago that if you get PMS cramps and blood during period, you should see a doctor immediately the entire office still made fun of him till this day. Had a friend who only figured out what a clitoris was in a game of cards against humanity at the ripe age of 26. He was the one judging the cards in a game with three guys and four girls. Someone played the clit card. He read the card aloud and goes, I don't even know what that is. Awkward silence ensued. Never felt so bad for someone in my life. Did someone enlighten him? By 26 years old you should be able to talk amongst yourselves. Damn. I would imagine after the silence, everybody would have started laughing. That's some embarrassing ass stuff. Of course they're gonna know what intercourse is by the time they hit 4th grade. They got the Discovery Channel don't they? My undergrad was in pre-med and we were dissecting the cadavers in lab one day. One of the structures we had to identify was the clitoris and this girl in our lab group had no idea what a clit clitoris looked like. She had been sexually active for like the previous 5 years. Oh man. This reminds me of the argument I got into with a buddy in high school. We were actually waiting for bio class to start, and I guess it was an anatomy unit or something. We would have been 16 or 17 at the time. Anyway, I don't remember how we got on the subject but he ended up saying girls pee from their clitoris. I said dude, they don't. Trust me, they really don't. The clitoris is basically just for pleasure. Now, my grades weren't as good as his, so naturally he assumed I was wrong. However, my grades weren't as good because I was chasing girls. So really, his became one of the few things I knew from experience that he did not. He continued insisting they pee from their clitoris, and eventually said do you want me to embarrass you in front of the class and just ask me?" Whatever. I said I promise you I will not be embarrassed and I beg you not to ask her this question in a room full of girls. But he did. He asked it. He got her attention. Stood up. And said Ms. Whatever can you please explain to Simpleton that girls pee from their clitoris. The silence that followed was. Unsettling. I felt terrible for him. But at the same time he was stubborn and didn't believe me because he had better grades. I'll never forget the look she gave him before quickly remembering she isn't supposed to judge students questions. Especially in that subject. She explained plotitely that they did not in fact pee from their clitoris. And reminded him of the urethra. He turned a shade of red you usually only see on clowns sat down and didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. One Christmas, thanks to Cards Against Humanity, my mom who's almost 70 asked the kids and grandkids from 12-50 what smegma, me and my brother couldn't breath until the new year. Not the opposite sex but of my own sex. I watched Robin Hood, Men in Tights as a young child. They have a part in the movie about circumcision. Basically they make a joke that circumcision is done with the mini guillotine. So for years I thought circumcision was cutting off the tip of the penis. In middle school I was in the locker room and noticed a penis with no tip. This only confirmed my suspicion. I assumed he was circumcised and I was not. In hindsight I realized that the foreskin was covering the tip and he was actually uncircumcised and I was circumcised. It wasn't until high school when I told my first girlfriend I was uncircumcised and she had to explain to me that I was not. 
some guy in the locker room and a short bit in a movie were not good evidence to argue my case. But on the upside, I get to tell this story about once a year and it always gets a laugh. Took me until high school to realize that the penis needs to get hard in order to enter the vagina. The sex ed we had in grade school was okay. It talked all about the reproductive organs and what they do, but nothing about how actual intercourse worked. I spent too long wondering how the heck a floppy penis was supposed to get inside that small hole. Edit. I realized that I never specified if I was a guy or a girl. The comment replies are hilarious. I may be female, but I identify as a chocolate pop dot. So take that for what you will. You take the eraser end of a pencil and just push your penis in there with it. Edit. Oh fuck this did not deserve gold. Edit 2. I am glad I was able to make so many people laugh. Have a great night guys. Oh my gosh so that's what people mean when they say they need a rubber for sex. If this doesn't get gold within the next 2 hours I'm upset. Edit. Wrong person ya morons. Edit 2. Perfectly balanced. I remember my sex ed teacher stressing how it was okay to ask questions if we didn't understand something. They encouraged it all the time. So I finally raised my hand and very seriously asked, how do I know if it's pee or sperm coming out of my penis she said go ask your father, and I felt so very dissatisfied. Not necessarily the opposite sex. But I was having my boyfriend feel a weird part of my belly button and he said man they must have pushed yours in wrong and I was like dart. Apparently he thought that doctors push the umbilical cord in when you're born and that's how belly buttons are made. He's 21. That the tampon string just hangs out there, making a girl look like a party popper. Yank it and you get a surprise. Edit. Wow I didn't not expect this to take off. Thanks for the gold. Also fixed spelling. Surprise. Surprise. This reminds me of a story my friend told me in college. She and this guy were pretty drunk and stared fooling around and she told him she was on her period. And he said he didn't care. He takes off her pants she says he is going to go to the bathroom to take out her tampon before sex and he says he doesn't care. She's kind of confused but they keep making out he then takes off her panties and pulled her tampon out with his teeth and spit it in the trash can. She said she didn't know whether to be turned on or horrified but she said the sex was good so whatever. A girl I know that I used to fool around with has a 5 year old son now, not mine. We were talking one day and I don't know why it got brought up but she called him a little pervert, and that all guys are perverts. I ask why, and she explains that we constantly think about sex at night because we wake up in the morning with erections. She called her 5 year old son a pervert for having morning wood. I had to explain to her that it's something we literally can't control. Doesn't matter what we are dreaming about, there's like a 99.9999% chance we are gonna wake up with a rager. She still didn't believe me. Holy fuck, you just made me realize why men don't platonically share beds on, like, school trips and stuff like women do. I slept in the same bed with another man once, I ended up waking up with him on top of me with a raging erection. Never again. Good friend of mine had testicular cancer, recently another friend made a comment that his wife must be so happy to not have to deal with balls anymore because they just hang there and it must be so much nicer looking. She thought that the entire ball sack was removed and he was just left with a penis. Well to be fair if there was an absence of testis in the sack it would be much smaller. You would think, but not often the case. When I had an orchiectomy, the vacuum created a hematoma which stretched the scrotum more. Less substance, more flap. Being a young kid, 
I used to hump my bed to get off. It's because I had Cinemax in my room. And my parents didn't know. So I got to watch Passion Cove all the time. I figured hey, he's doing this to that pretty lady. I can just imagine she's under me too. Now obviously I was shooting blanks and for the longest time I thought this is always how it would be. Well was I in for a surprise the first time I ejaculated. I was so mad that I had a mess to clean up now. I missed the days of rattling them off with nothing to worry about. Till I'm not the only one who started masturbating before they were producing semen. Edit. Of all comments. This is my top one. Thanks Reddit. Nope. It's a thing. It's just wonderful. And not at all uncomfortable. When you have to tell your kid that it's something done in private and not in the middle of the living room. Me too. I masturbated before I knew it was even a thing. When I first had an orgasm it scared me. I thought I broke something and got nervous. I've heard this. But like. I don't understand. Is it like. Nothing at all comes out. Like. You just feel good then go soft. It's weird to ask questions about little boy peens so I've always been scared to ask in case people think that sounds pedo-ish. Chick here. But I remember my ex telling me he used to masturbate and nothing came out, then later on it was a clear liquid, and then finally regular semen. Don't know if it's the same for all boys. Fun story, I'm a med student tearing for anatomy and we were dissecting the sex organs earlier this week. I asked one of the professors for help finding some of the structures so I could show the students what we were looking for. I said, I'm woefully uneducated in female anatomy which is unfortunate as I am a female. His response was, it's okay. You'd be surprised the number of guys who don't know it's called a scrotum and not just balls. We got damn late to the party but I posted this before and wanted to share again. I used to think my testicles were my unborn kids. Like one day they would hatch and bam. I would have two kids. I was always confused when I saw people with like eight kids. And wondered how he walked before. This is maybe the worst misinformation in this entire thread holy fuck that's hilarious. I thought my balls were filled with urine if it makes you feel better. Breast are soft. Being a loner meant I never felt any, and I assumed they are like muscular or something. Not stiff, but firm nevertheless. I'm breastfeeding, and when it's been a few hours since my baby last ate, my breasts get pretty hard because they get real little. My exes used IUDs for contraception that pretty much stopped their periods. At 24, my current GF is my first real exposure to a regular menstrual cycle. One time while getting intimate, she says by the way, I have a tampon in me. I ask but, what's it still doing there? Well I thought you use it like a pipe cleaner and then take it out. Late into high school I didn't know that tampons went inside. I thought they just laid there like a hot dogs in a bun 15 plus years later I still don't live that one down. That sounds like an extremely specific fetish now that I think about it. NSFW. There's a subreddit for that. Cock Sandwich. Pussy Jobs webpage. There was a game of battle of the sexes during a game night I missed. I heard the story about how the question for the men was, girls use only one tampon per period, tf. Apparently this one guy on a team of like 8 guys convinced everyone that the answer was true, because he grew up with 4 sisters. Dude, I have one sister, and I knew that was false. That is not okay. I thought periods were a one and done type thing, not a monthly ordeal. It made me wonder if my teacher was crazy sentimental when she said her daughters mark it on their family calendar. Edit. She told us this in sex ed to encourage tracking it. 
This Sunday will be period day, when we celebrate the memory of when I bled from my vagina that one day 16 years ago. Didn't you to write a song about that? Edit. Wow. Had no idea this would go over so well. Thanks for the gold. All of them. I can't believe the news today. I can't close my thighs and make it go away. How long? How long must we bleed this thong? How long? How long? Cause tonight, we can bleed as one. Synchronize. I thought when my period came, I could just sit on the toilet for a few minutes until it was over, like being. When the school nurse talked to the girls in my middle school about periods, she said that there might be a little spot of blood on the pad. So when little 11 year old me had an actual period and it wasn't just a spot, I was like holy hell what is wrong with me, am I gonna die, and then I found out that no, it's typically a week long thing, and my school nurse is an idiot who didn't want to scare children but inadvertently scared the shit out those of us who believed her and had a rude awakening. I got my first period pretty young. 4th grade, so about 9-10 yo, and my grandma hadn't talked to me about it yet so I thought I was dying lol, she explained that it happens to all women and it will happen until I'm like 50-ish, I thought this meant I would not stop bleeding for 40 years, just constant blood flow until it stopped like a faucet, I'm so glad I was wrong haha. Until my first GF. I knew periods happened monthly but I didn't know that they lasted around a week. From what I was told, it was once a month you'd bleed from your babimaka. I took that as just literally one time a month. Thought it was like a short ordeal, like a nosebleed or something. In my mid 30s, just found out that penises don't have two holes. I thought there would be two different, you know pipes for the two different fluids. You're semi-correct they do start in different places, they just connect on the way so they can exit the same place. It's like when two highways converge, sure you can take Interstate 90 from Wisconsin and Interstate 80 from Iowa, but they both combine in Illinois and instead of going to Gary, Indiana, they both exit out the tip of the penis. Wouldn't that be an odd road trip with the family? Start an I or end up in some dude's coconut. Boyfriend is 28. He thought we carried around little containers of Vaseline to lube up the tampons before inserting them. He also just found out that some tampons have cardboard applicators. He was horrified on both accounts. I sent that uncomfortable. Already commented this but he also just found out that maxipads stick to your panties, and not your body, like a giant band-aids. Honestly he might have something there with slamming some Vaseline on those cardboard applicators. That shit does not feel good. Edit. I meant the idea of lubricant. Please do not actually slam Vaseline in your vagina. That shit will also not feel good. You've seen those mini Vaseline lip balm things? That's what he thought those were. And yeah, I think he's onto something. Edit. Vaseline. Already commented this but he also just found out that Maxipads stick to your panties. And not your body, like a giant band-aids. I am 23 and just learned this. Edit. My inbox. I'm trying to sleep. Also 23, learned it last year when I had surgery and had to use some kind of medical pads, because I had an open wound directly above my ass. My dumbass just read your comment as the pad sticking on the outside of your panties and I was just like this seems stupid. How did I only know this now though? But then I realized it just sticks inside and everything is okay again. I had to explain to my female friend that when you orgasm you do not ovulate. She is 25 and was afraid of having sex because she didn't want to waste her eggs. 
This would be amazing awful if it was true though. You only have a finite number of sexual encounters before you're barren. Women have 300,000 viable eggs. So you have to orgasm 20 times a day every day for your entire fertile, puberty, menopause, life to run out. Not technically impossible I guess, but you'd have to be fucking committed. As a child I thought sex was one moment of penetration and then over, like you roll around and kiss, then the guy sticks it in once and the sperm comes out and sex over. I was basically getting ready to have sex for the first time when I learned that the penis is in the whole time thrusting. I didn't know about the thrusting either. I just thought that you fell asleep connected and the sperm would slowly come out due to the term sleeping together. Reminds me of the movie Avatar when they connect their hair to fuck Mayo. I always thought it was weird that they also use their hair to ride their horse things, and their flying monsters. I use my hands to jack off but also to shake your hand. We aren't so different. I've been having sex for years, you're supposed to do more than one thrust. I thought penises got slimy and slippery when men were about to have sex. I have no idea where I got this idea. To be honest, when I was 16 and was fumbling through my first hand blow job, I remarked on how soft skinned and wry his dick was. That must have been such a huge turn on for him. MMMM. Baby, your DK is so dry. Just the way I like it. TBF. It would make sex a lot better if the whole penis lubricated itself as well. It wasn't until I had a gay male friend late in high school that I learned gay men have anal sex. They don't actually put one's penis inside the others. Edit. I was apparently not far off on this one. Docking is a thing. Till. When two gay men have sex, how do they know whose penis will open up to accept the other person's penis? Edit, a word. What is it called when two men intertwine their penises like the snakes on the medic alert bracelet? They can if one of them has a stretchy enough foreskin. Try googling docking, p. Okay so as long back as I can remember. I knew girls didn't have dicks, but, I thought they just didn't have anything there at all. Like it was just a smooth area of skin, like a Barbie doll, and that they pissed from their butt and that's why they had to sit down and use toilet paper when urinating. Eventually I found out the truth, but for years I believed girls just didn't have anything there. I remembering having really bad diarrhea and thinking I was peeing from my butt and wondering if it were possible that I was turning into a girl. The human body used to be so much more mysterious. Have you ever had a diarrhea so bad that you came out of the bathroom as a girl? I knew what a vagina was, but I didn't know pussy was another forename for it. So why did my dumbass ask my 7th grade history teacher in the middle of class? Edit. So to add a little more to the story, I was known as the sheltered, books my teacher's pet so I was picked on a lot. Some guys in my history class were making fun of me for not eating pussy like they did. I was always a little slow and at that point in my adolescent. I barely understood the point of masturbation so oral sex was alien to me. They wouldn't explain what pussy meant so in my frustration I just rose my hand and asked the teacher. I didn't think asking about it was that inappropriate. So then Germany invaded Poland. Hand shoots up what's a pussy. France. Wikipedia web page. Now, continuing with today's topic. I was just in line with my mother at a drive through at Wendy's and after I order she just turns to me and asks, Italics or have you ever tried the putang I just slowly looked at her and was like, Mom where are you going with this and she went, it's fries with like gravy on top, I was like, Mom, please never say that word again. You, 
so I know where her vagina is, but where's the push, teacher, this, isn't sex ed, edit, I did not look over this before posting, it was supposed to be pussy, but the idea of Sean Connery responding with my words is hilarious, so I'll leave it, more like, what does pussy mean? The entire classroom stares at me in disbelief. Me and my younger sister used to play on those phone date lines when we were kids, and so at some point we heard someone use that word. So being Maber 5 6, we made our younger brother ask our dad what pussy meant, because we didn't know either. Did not end well. My brother thought women wore bikini tops etc. because they didn't have nipples and were embarrassed. He was probably 10 when I broke the news to him. Edit. Spelling. I was the same way. I think Barbie and her lack of nips are what causes the confusion. Learned the difference between tampons and pads I thought the words were synonyms. God there is a big difference on application. The actual vaginal hole is lower than expected. She quickly corrected me. Thankfully didn't go to low though. I still can't aim. Every night she's got to position my dick and say now push. Lucky for me. It's a turn on to have her line my junk up with her hand. It's like hey I want you inside me. Here ya go. Now get in there and go to work. I have to admit to this too. My first time fingering a vagina was certainly interesting. I vaguely knew that some men had foreskins, but I didn't know anything about how they operated or functioned until my late 20s. It honestly just doesn't come up very often in the Midwestern United States. I also didn't realize how rare intact foreskins were around here until then either. I'm uncircumcised and literally zero women seem to have had any problem with my penis. But back in middle school during sex ed someone asked what an uncircumcised penis looks like and the teacher compared it to a dog's. And the whole class when DWW took many years for me to believe that nope. My penis is very normal and by all accounts actually quite nice. My brother-in-law who is almost 30 years older than I am, was intact until he went into the army in the 1950s, and they cut that thing off, he is still pissed about it, edit, since I keep copper pasta in the same reply, it helps to understand that a lot of the senior military officers at that time, 1950s, had served themselves in WWI and before, The quality of enlisted men when they were junior officers was not nearly the same as in the post-WWII era. Certain types of men, from poor socio-economic backgrounds, did not have great hygiene and so it was thought to be a potential future problem on the battlefield where conditions are fairly dirty. Also, there was a belief at the time that foreskins would lead to easier contraction of STDs when soldiers on liberty would visit women of ill repute. My husband and I started dating in high school, so we had all the awkward first moments together. The first time I jacked him off, I was so shocked that come as warm Lameo. I don't know what I thought before, but I was like, it's warm exclamation point growth not what he wanted to hear. I have a 29 year old female friend who was a virgin up until her current boyfriend, and she's still a bit naive when it comes to the dirty work, they're super cautious about sex, not a bad thing, don't get me wrong. And, long story short, she's never felt or even seen come outside of a condom. The idea that this could possibly be her reaction to the stuff the first time she gets an unfiltered experience with it kinda makes me laugh. Edit. To everyone mentioning blowjobs and handies, as far as I know, they do those unwrapped, but either she's too inexperienced, or he doesn't let her finish him, or something. Cause from how she tells it he's never gotten off from those particular acts. 
I grew up in a religious area and my friend's premarital counselor was this pastor who made everyone read some super explicit Christian sex book before getting married. I guess he said he'd heard too many wedding night disaster stories that he felt it was his job to fully educate super sheltered Christian kids. I wouldn't be surprised if temperature of semen was in there since my friend said the book blazed through anal and all the way into how to use toys. Edit. Someone replied that the book may be called Sheep Music. I honestly never knew the name. Now that the thread got high I'm paranoid about asking the friend because he's a big redditor and really don't want to out my username. It was also more than 10 years ago and feels odd to contact him out of the blue about this. He had heard too many wedding night disaster stories that he felt it was his job to fully educate super sheltered Christian kids. That's actually really cool of him. My thoughts as well. Dude sees some problems and finds a practical solution to help educate people that might need it. Kudos to him. Reminds me of a biology professor at my undergrad which had a large number of homeschooled and otherwise sheltered students. He the anatomy section of a freshman bio course and had four separate questions on the same exam about locating the clitoris with each one including the information it needs to be stimulated for most women to be able to orgasm. Until I was about seven, I thought boobs were just lungs located outside the body. God that would be disturbing if you saw boobs inflating and deflating as women breathe. Edit. The replies have been half sharing in the horror, half turned on by this, and half not understanding the difference between inflating and just rising. I'm sure this will turn into a weird anime fetish somewhere down the line. When women are on their period and they sneeze and blood comes out of the vagina. Edit. Holy shit I never thought I would have so many upvotes in something on my life. And when they laugh they leak blood as well. Thank god I have a penis. Oh and it's not just blood like it would come out of a cut. It's gelatinous and gross and goopy like snot. Feels great to have a slimy glob forcefully evicted from your genitals. Feels great to have a slimy glob forcefully evicted from your genitals. As a man, I am sarcastically agree. Also, if you have a heavy flow, sometimes when you stand up you can feel the blood pouring out of your vagina. Fun. Oh, I hate that when I'm casually making conversation with someone. You're trying to talk but in the meanwhile you just feel this. Gloop. When a woman in labor is dilated to a 7 they are talking about her cervix not her pupils. I had heard the term in movies etc for years and made the connection while watching a video in birthing class and embarrassingly exclaimed oh that makes more sense. When pregnant I like to show my husband pictures of what the different levels of dilation look like compared to everyday objects to terrify him. Cheerio. Pop can. Bagel. When I went to a gynecologist for the first time there was a poster with circles from 2 cm up to 10 cm. Let me tell you how surprised terrified I was of how big 10 cm is. As a physician, I don't think I'd want to see someone with pupils dilated to 7 cm, let alone giving birth to another human. My friend was close to 30 before he realized that the birth control pill did not prevent STDs. He was dating a mutual friend, and she suggested that they both get tested before having sex without condoms. He replied, but you've been on birth control a long time. That's how I found out it was super common for adult, educated men to make this assumption. Huh. And here I always thought it was silly when the advertisements for anything birth control related always have that disclaimer about not preventing STDs. I always thought, duh, that's like saying sunglasses don't prevent skin cancer. 
was in my mid-twenties and had just finished having sex. The girl had been wearing black tights and as she was putting them back on, I was like, you know, I never knew tights were like. One thing, I thought they were two separate things, each of which you put on each leg, and she was like, are you serious? Watching One Born Every Minute, a show about women giving birth in the UK and ask my so where the umbilical cord went after being cut, I guess I'd always assumed it just sort of got sucked back up into the vagine like the electrical cord on a vacuum. I'm 27. Edit, yet I get it cord rope, cord music, the H stays motherfuckers. Men can make their penis dance. I don't know if it's all men, but certainly a majority seem to be able to make it bob up and down by clenching what I assume are abdominal muscles. The first time I saw it, I thought it was bordering on witchcraft. Edit, I have been reliably and repeatedly informed that it's not the abs. I am choosing instead to believe that it's a tiny little man who lives in your butt pulling on levers like that dude from Men in Black. Knock a key web page. Thank you for your cooperation in this matter. You might also be interested to know that testicles move of their own accord. If you get a guy to sit or lie down and relax you can just watch them slowly move around in a way that brings to mind a lava lamp. I remember noticing this for the first time, probably around 8 years old. I somehow convinced myself that there were aliens in my balls. I was so panicked I showed my mum and everything. I am 35 and male, and this is the first I hear or see of self-propelled balls. What magic is this? And more important did I miss it by being snipped? Nadut, I didn't learn about notice this until I was like 26. Hold a ball in your hand. Like place it resting on your palm cup it a little. You're trying to keep it still for observation. You'll notice parts of your sack contracting expanding. It's kind of freaky and awesome. Well I tried it. Now I have a meaty NG with HR. Should have left my cubicle. You just haven't taken the time to watch. You know how they go tight or loose based on temperature? It's just basically watching as that sort of thing happens. I have a friend who thought periods happened in exactly one calendar month. He said wouldn't it suck if you got your first period on your birthday, because then you'd be on your period on your birthday for the rest of your life didn't know where to begin explaining what's wrong with that. Edit, I'm curious why this got so many upvotes. Is it from women who have also encountered this belief, or is it from guys reading it and going wait, that isn't how it works? I used to date a guy who thought this but thought all of women kind had their period at the same time. When I had my first period after we got together, he squinted his eyes at me and said oh this is early, I didn't think you were all due until around the 20th. Female roommate who grew up in a house with only females, had a guy over, guy needed to pee. She remembers there's no toilet paper in the bathroom and runs to get a roll. He says it's okay, I'm just going to pee. She's confused. Didn't realize that guys don't wipe their penises after peeing. That women do not pee out of the hole they put their tampon in. I just assumed that was what took them so long when they went to the bathroom. They have to take it out and put it back in again. Right? Dad didn't know this either. He's 58. I knew about pubic hair, but did not realize just how hairy men's asses can get until we got our kitchen remodeled. I thought women wore bras so the milk wouldn't pour out. Edit. While this blew up, like boobs full of milk, apparently, fairly certain I was in high school before I knew the truth. They talked about lactation and sex organs and all of that jazz in health class, but they never talked about undergarments. I mean, why would they? Being a gay male, 
I didn't really care enough to find out if what I thought was true. I was more concerned about why I was attracted to dudes. I am pretty sure a female friend made a comment at some point about her little brother who thought that bras were to keep the milk in and how they are real for support, shape, etc. My thought was oh wow, interesting, but look at his muscles, damn. During certain periods of the child rearing process, this becomes surprisingly true, source, father of two. I mean. It does happen while nursing. A woman can start lactating at hearing a baby cry, not necessarily her own. Feeling intense emotions, or even at seemingly random times. There are inserts they sell to absorb things so you don't soak through your shirt. Being a child of the 80s, my mother told me she used some shoulder pads. Resourceful. Not me but a colleague. He thought girls had penises and gave birth through their ass. He was a little weird and it came up a few times. And I was really confused the first few times. But quickly discovered that no one wanted to correct him. He is now a father, so I suspect he have figured it out. My boyfriend just asked me yesterday if I ever see my eggs come out when I'm on my period. We're both university students. I like, a woman's egg is the only single human cell visible to the naked eye. My girlfriend was killing herself laughing last night because I thought Maxipad stuck to your skin and not your underwear. I turned 30 this year. My ex-boyfriend thought this. He asked me if it hurt when I ripped them off. Well they're supposed to stick to your underwear. If the front gets loose and curls inward you have an impromptu bikini wax 00. Had that happen in college when I took a horseback riding class. The whole darn pad flipped and adhered to my pubic hairs. Or they. Well, if you put a maxipad in a g-string you might as well have soldered the sucker to your thigh. So, not far off champ. Well. I think I just learned that some women live on the edge and wear g-strings on their period. I once had a gf that wore g-strings exclusively, no matter how inconvenient it was. She also had chronic UTs but was super duper positive the two were unrelated. Really frequent uterus can also be from not cleaning her later bits after sex. I know this from experience. There's no rolling over and going to sleep now, or even just running to the bathroom to clean up. I have to pee, then use soap and water for a quick little washing, otherwise I'll have a UT by the next afternoon. The towel wrap thing girls do on their head after a shower, their hair is actually wrapped up in it. For years I thought it was like some kind of towel hat. I've heard of this misconception before. Where did you think the hair was? Just piled up on top of the head? Edit. To those of you saying it's not or where is it semicolon the hair is wrapped in the twist. There was a tiff about this a few years ago. It made me cry laughing. Tifu by pulling away my girlfriend's towel. Tifu web page. TL. DR. Guys the tower licent on their hair it is their fucking hair WTF. I'm dying. It's a top 10 tofu for sure. I do believe it got fared with fuck up of the year. It's legit one of the funniest, most WTF OMG posts I've ever read. I just had to get my so to demonstrate. I too thought it was a towel hat. Ha. Huh. This one is my favorite. I don't actually know if my husband knows the true purpose of my towel hat. Serious question for the guys who are just learning this. Why do you think girls wear towel hats? Like, why would we all do this without a reason? This is something I'm just learning too. I thought it was so the wet hair stays out of the way and doesn't drip and cling everywhere. I just thought it was all shoved on top and the towel hat keeps it up. 
Well I assume we all knew it was for drying but what went on under the towel was a bit of mystery. I didn't know that the hair was incorporated into the wrap. I recently came to the realization that women have a little pee hole that they pee out of. I was absolutely gobsmacked when my GF presented me with this information. I spent about a week thinking about how this has never come across in a conversation or how I was never taught this. I, for some reason, always assumed they peed through the baby exit hole. I'm 26 and thought I was invincible. I now no longer know what reality is. I'm still in disbelief to be honest. My ex, lesbian, 20s, thought guys erections looked like dogs. One of the most creepy images I've ever imagined tbh. I totally read this wrong at first and assumed she thought the penis itself resembled a dog. Not that human penises look like dog penises. So of course I'm sitting here trying to think of the last dick I saw and whether or not it resembled any dog breeds. Thanks for the imagery. I learned that tampons and maxipads were, in fact, not designed to absorb a clearish blow liquid that leaked somewhere on a woman's body. I grew up in a house with two brothers. How was I supposed to know? My friend's ex-girlfriend thought women had prostates. She was a lesbian who learned about sex from slash fanfic. Martin. Gay sex written by virgin tweens and the mid aughts was the worst way to get sex ed but damn if most of my friends didn't learn about the birds and the bees from Naruto preg fan fiction. I had my first boyfriend at 16, until then, my only exposure to male genitalia had been those illustrations in my biology textbook, so when my boyfriend got naked, the first thing I noticed was that he only had one testicle, or so I thought, because I had always assumed for some reason that you would be able to immediately see the outline of two testicles within the scrotum. I was expecting two noticeable lumps, something akin to a plastic bag with two walnuts in it, but number, all I saw was a round sack, it confused me for a very long time. I honestly thought my boyfriend had only one testicle, yet he never brought it up or even seemed ashamed of it. Although I didn't mind it, I was impressed that he didn't seem to lack any self-confidence. Unlike all the stuff I read online about guys being insecure from having only one testicle, I'm not sure when it finally clicked that he did, in fact, have two testicles. I finally admitted it to him one day. He still makes fun of me for it. He's my husband now. My story is super similar to this. With how kids drew dicks on things in my childhood, I always thought that each testicle was on each side of the wee. In its own separate scrotum. I didn't realize they were housed together until I was 18. I've never thought about it, but you're right. The way kids draw dicks kinda sucks. The way kids draw dicks kinda sucks. I don't know what this is. It's not a first world problem. But clearly it is a problem. We must put a stop to this and teach all children an atomically correct image of this. Unlike all the stuff I read online about guys being insecure from having only one testicle. Is there a subreddit for that? First time I had sex I thought the vagina was up higher. Like where the penis is on guys. I think your confusion is understandable and fun a lol. Penis is a clitoris. Scrotum is the labia. Taken as a whole. They pretty much are in the same place. I thought that the vagina was in the same place as the penis. So when you had sex it was straight down and not up and in. As a child, I thought blow jobs were shitty low level jobs, that doesn't pay as much, like in a balloon factory girls especially don't like doing blow jobs because it's a job that blows, edit, holy inbox, I guess this comment doesn't suck, one of my top comments about blow jobs thanks blow 
in a similar vein I asked my older sister what a gang bang was she for some reason said oh it's a sort of party. Aged 12 I told my dad I was going to Philippa Butler's gang bang. I did not attend Philippa's party. Cheers sis. I had always assumed that guys also wiped after they peed, and apparently some guys don't know that girls do wipe after they pee. Learned that when my boyfriend forgot to pack toilet paper when he moved into his new apartment and I really had to pee. I asked him what he expected to do when he had to piss and he had no TP around. But apparently guys just squeeze or shake. His roommate just thought I really had to shit. That the vagina doesn't actually stay the width you stretch it to during sex. So just because someone sleeps around they don't have to have a big hole. Until I was 7. I thought that if you took a turd out of the toilet and let it dry then it would turn into a baby. I used to see white dog poop on the side of sidewalks and I assumed that they were babies that didn't make it. I essentially thought that pregnant women didn't poop for months and birth was like trying to have a constipated dump. Women like sex too. I know it sounds crazy not to realize this but I was raised in a fairly puritanical household and I honestly didn't realize until so embarrassingly late that most women enjoy most of the sex they are having. Everyone wants sex. Seems obvious in retrospect, I know. But that's why I'm here. I hope some insecure 17 year old young man will realize this and put his mind at ease. It wasn't until college that I learned that girls could be messy and even messier than guys. The state of the rooms of some girls I knew looked like a tornado had hit it. I had a pretty large family growing up, and my brothers and I always had much cleaner rooms than my sister or mother. Any place my ex stayed would similarly quickly become a train wreck. I didn't learn that the stereotype is apparently that men are perceived to be the sloppy ones until recently, since that's been the opposite of the case my whole life. Dwight, you said we could come to you if we had any questions. Where is a clitoris? On a website it says at the crest of the labia. What does that mean? What does the female vagina look like? When two gay men have sex, how do they decide which penis is gonna receive the other penis inside of it? It is never appropriate to refer to your pregnant wife, or any pregnant woman, for that matter, as Big Mama. Also, Pregoma Kego is similarly frowned upon. Makeup actually does legit take a while. Girls are just fucking around wasting time. I learned that men have the capacity to love at 15 stroke 16 when I had my first relationship. All my life I believed that all men want is sex and that's the only reason they are ever in a relationship. Once a baby comes they either continue to stay for the sex or leave because no sex. Raised by a single mother who had a number of shit relationships and my biological father is a narcissist who was barely there. Later on I found out my mum believed this too. Mum is now married to an awesome guy who is basically my adopted father. Grew up in a semi-religious household. Teen years they hammer down men pretend at love to get sex. Woman pretend at sex to get love still have crippling depression years after my ex. Well I was about 35 when I learned that some women enjoy heterosex even the penetration part. Until then I had been firmly taught that intercourse is only what men want 35. Dwarven babies just spring out of holes in the ground. I was so ignorant. I was like 25 when my then GF informed me women can only get pregnant during a few days per month. Up until then I thought it was whenever they weren't on their period. This is true. But unless a woman is tracking her cycle and knows what fertile signs to look out for, 
it's best to assume that it is whenever they aren't on their period if you don't want to make a baby. Women don't all ovulate on day 14 of the 28 day cycle. Some women ovulate early or late in their cycle and might not know it. I'm a guy, but I'm circumcised, and it wasn't until I was 14 or so when I finally learned what a foreskin really looked like. Until then, I thought uncut dicks looked like that frilly spitting dinosaur from Jurassic Park. You know I'm talking about. I couldn't figure out why people wouldn't be circumcised. Yuck. In 8th grade I thought cum was a male term and jizz was the female term for sexual fluids. In the locker room, some guys asked me if I had ever jizzed before and I said no. I'm not a girl. It was the most confused I'd ever seen a group of people in my life. When I was 16 I learned women only make milk when they are pregnant. Until then I thought it was disgusting that guys sucked on boobs. When I was 10, I watched Molly and me and after the sex scene where they roll around on the bed kissing. I thought that was how sex actually was and that sex was when two people laid down on top of each other. The guy put his penis in. And then they rolled around to slosh the eggs and semen back and forth like a mixer until fertilization happened and the egg went back into the wife. I stayed believing this until I went to public middle school. And this isn't me, but a friend of mine just learned at the age of 18 that men have a G-spot in their ass. And thought all along that gay sex was one guy volunteering selflessly to be in tons and tons of pain just so the other could have a good time. Which I don't doubt is true some of the time. Pretty much everything about the high man. Thank you. Adam ruins everything. She doesn't want you to fix her problem. She wants you to listen to it and sympathize. My aunt's a therapist and apparently the whole issue is mostly a communication error. In general, the worst way of giving advice is by going, you should do this, or have you done this or why don't you just do this, for the person saying it, they think they are being helpful and fixing the problem. But to the person receiving the advice it ends up sounding condescending and coming from the assumption that they are perceived as idiots who haven't thought of all the solutions before. Women are usually trained from young not to be bossy, so most already tend to avoid approaching advice giving that way. Unfortunately, most men tend to approach advice giving this way. So a more effective way of advice giving is actually to first acknowledge the person's feelings, ask clarifying questions that are free from judgment, and just relate a similar situation that you've experienced and how you've resolved it. An example would be, A. My co-workers are such morons and my boss doesn't see it. Wrong way of answering that usually shuts down the conversations or gets the other party defensive. Fuck it, you shouldn't care why don't you show your boss how stupid they are have you told your boss about it, right way of answering it, oh wow, that sounds rough, I'm sure it's stressful for you, what did your co-workers do, that sounds frustrating, I remember when I had this co-worker who kept screwing up and my boss couldn't see it at all, it was so frustrating. I eventually started CCing my boss in every email and luckily he eventually saw how badly my co-worker was screwing up. That helped for me. I'm not sure if it'll help in your case. But do you think that would work? It's a bit longer. But very useful for conflict resolution with people. Regardless of age gender. Edit. I'm getting a lot of replies saying it's hard and a waste of time to respond in the right way. Of course it's hard. There's a reason therapists get paid. That sucks. Girlfriend has been studying for the bar exam all summer. At this point I've said that sucks so many times it had to have lost its meaning. Even if it's just a placebo. I have to come up with other ways of saying it like that stinks. Ugh that's the worst, or I hate that, or my favorite why does everyone suck except us, I try to be the best boyfriend I can.
always thought that the menstrual cycle was a one-time thing that turned girls into women and that's it. That women love men as much as we love them. I'd been told I love you a few times but I always felt like men kinda just filled a role in women's lives. Like men are useful and fun. Kinda like a dog but it's more okay to shout at us and say horrible things to us. Then I started watching a YouTube gaming show hosted by a long term couple and later listening to a podcast with an all female cast. I was shocked and how sincerely they adored the men in their lives. It took a couple of years for me to really believe it. I was 28 when I first experienced anything close to it myself when I was lying next to the girl I was seeing and she had this look in her eyes that I really felt said there's nowhere on earth I'd rather be. Edit. The podcast is Swish and Flick. The relationship between one of the hosts. Tiffany, and her husband isn't exactly a part of the podcast but there were a few times that the way she spoke about him warmed my heart and it made an impact. The YouTube show is Video Games Awesome. Edit 2. Confused by some of the assumptions being made and where some of that conversation has gone. I've had predominantly positive relationships with women my whole life. It's possible to adore women and enjoy their company and to embrace them as part of the richness of life without feeling appreciated in a reciprocal manner. I always thought the opposite as a child, that men were biologically incapable of emotions other than hate and anger, and that us women were the ones who felt all the emotions on the spectrum. Took me a long time to move away from that one. I thought the same. Just based on the adults around me, the grown men around me only ever expressed anger or neutrality. My parents are married to each other and in love with each other. But while my father says I love you, I don't see any sign in his facial expressions body language behavior that he actually feels anything. Edit. It occurs to me that it might also have something to do with the fact that my father was always complaining about women and girls being emotional and being irrational and overreacting whenever we expressed emotions or failed to suppress emotions. I thought titties referred to the chest in general so as an annoying 11 year old I decided was a good idea to run up to other boys in the locker room and call them out saying nice titties or something. I think everyone thought I was either special ed or gay at that point. Not me, but at a former job had a co-worker in his 60s, who has been married for 40 odd years, mentioned he was out because he had to get his prostate checked. Q female co-worker asking if everything was okay. He said yes but it was uncomfortable. She mentioned she wouldn't know. This guy then tells her the importance of getting her prostate checked, since it's a cancer risk. Now, he's not wrong that it is important, but we had to explain to him that women don't have prostates. This man was married 40 damn years and didn't know this. We certainly could take some educated guesses about their sex life after that. Maybe I'm being dense, but what assumptions were you making? Because a typical vanilla, his sex life wouldn't teach him anything about whether women had a prostate, assuming he doesn't know much about the prostate function. Edit. To clarify, I don't care that the old man was never taught about human reproductive organs. It's clear from the story he didn't have a full understanding. My question is what assumptions about the man's sex life can you make by him not knowing women don't have a prostate? Based upon, comma we certainly could take some educated guesses about their sex life after that. Because I can't think what that would imply. You can't say oh they love anal because that makes no sense at all within the old man's belief system. They might but it would be entirely unrelated to the man's understanding of prostates. Wait, they don't? I don't even fucking know what a prostate is, goddamn. They do not. A prostate is a gland that's part of the male mammalian reproductive system. 
During orgasm it secretes an alkaline fluid that helps protect the sperm from the acidic environment inside the vagina. Having grown up on a TV and movie diet of strong women kicking ass and beating up assailants and so forth, I did not realize that women are significantly weaker than men, on average biologically speaking and not on an individual basis. Dart. When young I was asking these two girls why it took two of them to carry a box I knew I could easily carry by myself, and they acted like I was just making fun of them when I was really puzzled. Also when dating it took me a while to realize women generally like to be walked to their cars because unlike the movies they do not automatically know martial arts and can defeat any man who f's with them I am looking at you CW. It's pretty absurd how drastic the difference is, from what I've read. Almost all men are measurably stronger than almost all women. I really thought things were more equal. I think that generally speaking a lot of people conflate equality with sameness. Men and women are equal. Men and women are not the same. Look at winning times for female Olympic athletes. Then look at competitive times for your high school state championship in the same races. The top women in the entire world with every possible training and coaching resource available are only as fast as 15. 18 year old boys with the expertise of a teacher who enjoys track coaching enough to volunteer to do it after school for a slight pay bump training them. Strength wise, the gap is even larger. I really didn't believe the idea that the times could be so similar for female Olympians and high school boys but I looked it up and you were right. The winning time for the 4x400 relay for women in the Rio Olympics was 3.21. This past year the championship time for boys in Ohio for that same event was 3.19. Yeah, I heard someone make the comment a couple days ago that a good high school boys soccer team would outright beat the US women's national team. Yes, the US WNT might have a technique and tactics advantage, but the difference in strength and speed is too vast. I'm by no means a small girl, 5 feet 7 inches and, at the time, 165. I thought I was untouchable, fairly strong for a girl, until I got into a play fight with a guy one time. He was a inch shorter than me, but a bodybuilder. It was an incredible wake up for me at the time in college and off on my own so much. I never let on how much he scared me that day, but it changed the way I look at my own safety. Yeah, it's absurd almost. I'm by no means a workout warrior, and very skinny, but I'm still vastly stronger than my girlfriend. It had really opened my eyes to how women must feel, knowing that 99% of guys could easily overpower them at any time if they wanted to. When I was about 5 or 6 I remember asking my mom how do you know if it's a baby or a poo coming out of your bum. My boyfriend didn't know that girls don't pee out of their vaginas until like 6 months ago. He's 23. It was cute but also sad the education system failed him so badly. When I was 15 I learned that while that when finger blasting a girl, there is a right hole and a wrong hole to try to get your finger in, and no I am not referring to an asshole as the wrong hole. The first time I ever ate someone out, I was absolutely wasted, and I'm still not completely sure I didn't snog her belly button. When I asked her about it later, she wouldn't stop laughing and refused to tell me much. That men aren't upset if they're quiet, they're literally thinking about nothing or what if you crossed a fire-breathing dragon with a T-Rex? I feel like most women don't believe it when they ask what a guy is thinking and he replies nothing. Like no we really do think about nothing sometimes. It's wonderful lol. When I'm zoning out I'm usually thinking about work unfortunately. That and I like quiet, so if I'm just cuddling on the couch I'm perfectly fine saying absolutely nothing. 
women ovulate from only one ovary each ovarian cycle, not both. I learned this in my third year physiology class this past year. I am 19 and heading off to medical school. A very few women intermittently ovulate for both, hence fraternal twins. When you see a family that has a bunch of twins over generations, it's this because it's an inheritable tray. Identical twins are completely random. Oh man. I thought pap smear was a breast examination for lumps, either the pap was the sound made when the examination was done. My friend still brings it up occasionally when we meet up. I wish there's a hole I can hide in when she does. Women have the same sexual appetite, need for validation, ego, etc as us guys. It took me until my early 20s to realize this. In high school, I always felt like I was trying to appeal myself to women, and win them over by acting the way they want me to. If I do good enough, they'll let me be with them. I was horribly unsuccessful with girls through this time. Once I realized that we weren't all that different, things became much easier. This is all too common. At least you realized it in your early 20s. Not a bad time to become more successful with women. Curious. Do you have sisters? I'm married to a guy who had only brothers, and his level of innocence ignorance was epic at first. Also, I think this is changing from when I was young, long time ago, but girls used to be very, very socialized to hide the ordinary things you mention. Ego, need for validation, horny, nope, 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 it was always defer to guys. Focus on what they need, and expect to find sex embarrassing and painful, if not outright dangerous. I didn't know what a vagina was until I was 13 and pulled down my first girlfriend's pants and audibly said you have two buttholes, that's cool. That the balls hang together like best friends, like, I always thought they were in two divided sacks, oh. And that foreskin is so important for uncut, read, 95% of my countrymen, dude's pleasure, that's what happens when you grow up watching American porn, I guess. A lot of people, for reasons I don't understand, draw the male genital assembly like it's a rocket ship with two boosters strapped to the sides, given that I typically saw that as graffiti in the men's bathroom. Ostensibly it is drawn by people who have balls of their own and should be familiar with how they actually look. I don't know why or how they get it so wrong. Like many symbols seen in everyday life, accuracy is less important to the omnipresent cock and balls graffiti than ease of creation and interpretation. Over a span of multiple revelations from 10-17 I learned what a vagina was and more or less how it worked. I knew dongs and nuts were a guy's thing, but I just thought that there was a smooth patch of skin where a penis would be and that girls just didn't pee. Which is why they don't think pee jokes are funny and they always sit down and take forever in the bathroom, because they only poo. I later learned that girls had this vagina thing and that girls do pee. So I assumed that the vagina was the equivalent of the penis since pee comes from their nothing major. I didn't know what sex was at this point. I had heard of it but my only understanding was that you hugged and kissed while naked, and I had no connection to babies. Flash forward to my own sister's birth. I had thought that babies were pooped out the butt and grew in the stomach. I told my parents and asked why newborns weren't covered in poo, to which they alluded my understanding of birth may be flawed. I then had sex ed, which helped surprisingly little. I learned that the vagina does more than just pee, and babies air and pooped out, but some things just didn't click in my mind. And even though I learned a lot, I had some misconceptions. Firstly, that women's breast milk was stored in the butt, despite what the name implies. 
I also thought that men had a secret reserve of milk in their armpits in case the baby needed emergency milk. The other was that vaginas had two slots, one to hold the baby, and the other to release period goo, and that there was basically a door that had to swing so that both couldn't be open at the same time. The vagina one I figured out eventually once I got a better definition of what a period was. But the boob one sadly I learned the hard way much later on when I mentioned it casually during a discussion about it. I had thought until that point that boobs were just masses of flesh for babies to rest on. I am still not sure about the man milk one though. I know. Think. Guys can lactate. But where does it come from? Where does it go? Where does it come from Cotton Eye Joe? Edit. To the kind stranger who gave me my first gold. Thank you. I am going to have some emergency armpit milk to celebrate. I read somewhere that woman's period attract bears. Bears can smell the menstruation. That girls have a separate hole for peeing. I learned this a week ago. I'm 17. Women want and desire sex. They will even go out looking for it. Your job as a man is to shut the fuck up and not change their mind. I'm 36 and by all accounts pretty decent at most things sex but goddamn it if I am virtually helpless unhooking a damn bra. I suspect I will go to my grave never learning the secret to this puzzle. That when your female friend GF wife is aggressively complaining. Just shut up and listen. Do not try to solve the problem. Because whatever they are talking about is likely not the problem. And is only one frustrating thing that set them off when they were finally in a safe place to vent. Just shut up and listen. Eventually they will get to what's really bothering them and of course it could be you. It's also a great strategy to respond. After the venting is over, with what do you think we should do? Just a small technique that has helped me stay on a team with my wife. My cousin, female, told me that she didn't realize that semen was stored in the testicles until she was like, 17. She'd always thought that erections were the penis filling up with semen. I mean. If you didn't know any better, it'd make sense I guess. Just so you know, semen isn't actually stored in the testicles. The gonads secrete a sort of liquid that contains the spermatozoa, and that travels up towards the abdomen where it's mixed with other fluids from the prostate and the seminal vesicles, to form semen. Did you all know that girls don't pee out of their vaginas? because middle school young engineer was unaware of that fact. A couple years ago a friend and I were talking about my then partner's frustration with erectile dysfunction caused by his diabetes. She already knew. She was his best friend and he had already talked with her about it. I wasn't outing a secret. Anyway, during my conversation with her I mentioned that getting an erection is not necessary for climax ejaculation. She looked me in complete disbelief. She had always figured, based on her experience of one leading to the other, that an erection was a necessary precursor to men having an orgasm. She was in her 30s, though I'm not really sure there would should have been a time in her life where she would have been exposed to this information anyway. I'm sorry, what 19 year old male, this is absolutely news to me, do explain. Yeah, men can ejaculate without an erection also, ejaculating and having orgasm is different, men can have orgasm without ejaculating as well. I am 57 and have been married for 33 years, and I did not know this until today. I am not even sure my husband knows this. It looks like we will be having a conversation soon. From this post it sounds like sex ed is lacking and needs to be fixed. Edit. Spelled from like wrong. Now fixed. 36M. 
On Sunday, I learned that toxic shock syndrome is caused by bacteria and not from chemicals in tampons. With all the chemicals we have convinced women that they need to put on and in their bodies, I had just assumed that tampons were poisonous. I had just assumed that tampons were poisonous. Props to whoever could successfully market poison tampons. Women have pressure when they piss, I'd assumed it just kind of dribbled out. Vagina, that's the inside part, the outer is the caldevola, the lips are the labia, cervix is hidden inside and if you feel far up enough you feel something like the tip of a nose, that's the cervix which is the entrance to the uterus, the cervix can open up to allow our baby out of the uterus. When I was 16, I was hanging out with my girlfriend at the time, when suddenly this putrid smell of fish hit my nostrils. I started saying things like wow do you smell that it smells like a dead fish I wonder where it's coming from. We were in my room and I had no idea it was her. I found out 4 years later that if women don't clean their later parts properly it can smell that way 15 years later I still think about how she must have felt that day. I'm sorry, Wendy. That you can't get a woman off by just pounding the sex hole, you gotta work the clit too. A woman can get off by just intercourse, but it is not guaranteed. Some absolutely need clit stimulation. Some have enough clit stimulation from intercourse and some may only need intercourse. There are even women who can get off from breast stimulation. Apparently the pain from menstrual cramps are mostly in the back, or anywhere else in the body but the vagina. Edit, a okay, neighbor not only in the vagina is better wording. Cramps are in around the uterus, so lower abdomen can sometimes cause back pain if those muscles also tense up. A friend's boss wouldn't allow her to leave a meeting to go to the bathroom. She needed to change her pad as she was on her period. She asked again. He said no. She said if you don't let me go to the bathroom, I'm going to bleed through my skirt onto this chair. He said, just hold it in. He was a 33 year old man who thought women could just hold back the tide with their vagina muscles.